Uh, yeah, the spooling of Mo's okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Isn't this a beautiful day? Yeah, yeah. On the count of three, everybody smile. <laughs> And laugh. That's great. Awesome. Um, and so today, I think, is uh, 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 NCAA finals, right? Okay. So um, the men's, yes, 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 the men's NCAA final. Uh, and I'm sure uh, people will be asking me to stop with the jokes and to get going so they can get to the, the game. So, um, so I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order and ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance uh, and then remain standing for a moment of silence if you can. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Kearns? Here. Councilmember Boland? Here. Councilmember Montney? Here. Councilmember Dannenberger? Here. Councilmember Becker? Here. Councilmember Hendrick? Here. Councilmember Ward? Here. Councilmember Crumpler? Here. Mayor Milwambwe? Okay, here. Um, no, we have um, under recognition. We have a a proclamation. Um, and it's a recognition for National Library Week. And I think uh, Jeannie's gonna come up. Do you want to go up to the podium over there? Um, So whereas um, libraries offer the opportunity for everyone to connect with others, learn new skills, and pursue their passions, no matter where they are on life's journeys, whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions, striving to ensure equitable access to information and services for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, and socioeconomic status, Whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, developing and expanding collections, programs, services that are as diverse as the populations they serve. Whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, uh, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. Whereas libraries play a pivotal role in economic development, by providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to local prosperity and growth. Whereas libraries make choices that are good for the environment and make sense economically, creating thriving communities for a better tomorrow. Whereas libraries are treasured institutions that preserve our collective heritage and knowledge, safeguarding both physical and digital resources for uh, present and future generations, whereas libraries are an essential public good and fundamental institutions in democratic societies, working to improve society, protecting the right to education and literacy, and promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all, whereas libraries Librarians and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, I, Mboka Malambwe, Mayor of the City of Bloomington, do hereby proclaim April 7th through 13th, 2024, as National Library Week in the City of Bloomington. During this week, I encourage all residents to visit their library, our renovated library, and celebrate the adventures and opportunities they unlock for us every day. Ready, set, library. <laughs> Thank 
picture? Does anybody think of a picture? Yes. Jeannie really wants one. This is not a I just thank you everyone so much for the investment that we've made in our library, and I'm excited for what is particularly going to come in for us. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jeannie. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent. Mayor, if we could, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we have public comment first. Oh, sorry. Oh, Thanks. gosh, I'm, I'm just rushing through this. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, she caught me. Okay, uh, let's go back to public comment. Uh, do we have any public comment? We do. Okay. Uh, we did not receive any emailed public comment, okay. but we do have five people registered to speak in person. Um, after you read your statement, we'll start with uh, Tony Coletta and then Jay Phillips will follow. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Uh, public comment is an opportunity for speakers to provide their views and feedback to the city council. It is also an opportunity for the city council to listen and hear diverse points of view to maximize the impact of public comment and show respect for the expression of all views. Speakers should maintain civility and focus on city issues. Speakers must identify themselves for the record but are not required to give their address. Each speaker is given the floor for three minutes and the council does not respond or engage in debate. Any speaker that engages in threatening or disorderly behavior will be deemed out of order and their time ceased. All right, Tony Coletta, if you could come forward, please. Good evening. I didn't know that I'd be joining during library week. My wife is actually a librarian, so uh, <laughs> we have wonderful resources here. So I want to thank you for that as well. But I actually am here tonight. My name is Tony Coletta. I am uh, the chair chairman of the board of directors for the McLean County Chamber of Commerce and vice president of human resources for Carl Health. Thank you for the opportunity to address you during this public comment session and considering what I have to share. I address you today as chairman of the chamber on behalf of its 930 plus members, excuse me, our member businesses, the majority of which are right here in Bloomington. At the chamber, part of our mission is to advocate pro-business perspectives. <clears throat> that means advocating for our member businesses and their success. Today, that advocacy is in support of the Downtown Bloomington Streetscape Plan and its Phase 1 funding as part of the fiscal year 2025 budget. As you may recall, we also advocated for the passage of the funding to develop this plan back in 2022. In alignment with our 2024 advocacy agenda crafted by our Government Affairs Committee and approved by our Board of Directors, we consider these both to be key votes to the business community and ask that you vote yes to approve both measures. Last week, you received a letter from us laying out why we support these efforts and how it ties to the priorities of the business community. I will briefly outline those reasons again here. Promoting downtown economic development and quality of place projects is a key priority for the chamber. It serves the dual purpose of stimulating economic activity and attracting a, a, a talented, dynamic workforce to our community. These directly correlate to our top two policy priorities, priorities for 2024, which are workforce development and quality of life projects. Businesses thrive in communities where people want to live. For the city of Bloomington, we support significant public investment in downtown Bloomington, specifically via the Downtown Bloomington Streetscape Project. This is an exciting opportunity to revi revitalize our downtown. Developing our city center into a hub of economic activity will benefit all of Bloomington Normal and McLean County. <clears throat> Members of the Chamber's CEO Council, Government Affairs Committee, Board of Directors, general membership and staff have engaged throughout the, this public process and appreciate the conversation to this point. We look forward to working with you to implement the plan and in closing, thank you for your time and please vote, please vote yes on the streetscape plan and its phase one funding. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Jay Phillips and then to follow will be Noah Tank. Yeah. 
It's great to see all of you this evening. Thanks for having us here, and thank you for being here uh, to discuss, discuss this topic. You know, I am Jay Phillips. I am this uh, chairman of the CEO Council here in McLean County, as well as president for Commerce Bank here in Bloomington Normal. The CEO Council has now been on this journey to, to get to this vote for over four years, along with our conversations and partnerships with many of you on the council and city, city administration. Our support for the streetscape plan at this point should be no secret. For those who are unfamiliar with the CEO Council, we're a group of 23 local business owners and leaders here in our community that believe in smart investments and decisions in our community that will assist in moving all of us forward. Our group represents 3,000 jobs within McLean County and provides tax support of under over 700 million in revenue, revenue generated. Our support for the downtown streetscape plan resonates for multiple reasons. We believe in quality of place as an economic driver and that thriving downtown can provide a, provide a staple for our community, jobs, income, a place of social interaction, tax revenue, retention of workforce talent, and a hub for a quality of life for our residents and our future residents. When we think of cities that we visit in our lives, most of the times our minds go directly to the reputation of that city's downtown. Please know this is something we can't hide from. It's now time for us to evolve. Once again, the time spent by the CEO Council now spans over four years of research, council conversations spanning two city council terms, city administration conversations, and has resulted over that time period with one desired outcome of approval of this plan and its phase one funding. We look to this council as a group, as leaders within our community, to be determined to create a long-term vision for Bloomington in which this project can be, provide an anchor for. Our council is familiar with the previous streetscape plan, which was developed and shelved around a decade ago. Taxpayer dollars were spent, as well as time, and, and, our, request, and our request is not short of asking not to repeat the past. As the CEO council was present when the current plan was approved, much conversation surrounded the failure of implementing the past streetscape plan, along with the dollars spent. Once again, we ask this plan to move forward. I will leave you with one quick uh, story of mine. At eight years old, I was an American Legion baseball team, baseball player, and annually was asked to fundraise for the league. I remember a thriving downtown Bloomington as I stood in front of Fannie Mae, where today the Pantograph sits across from the History Museum. I remember raising enough money over a weekend that I was awarded with free Chicago Cubs tickets where I got to see Andre Dawson. I would, extremely, I would be extremely proud to see my grandchildren be able to do the same in Bloomington downtown. Myself and the CEO Council greatly appreciates the time invested by all of you in conversations with ourselves, the city, and their partners who have put together this plan that we all believe in. Please vote to approve. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we'll have Noah Tang, and then to follow, Zach Carlson. Always too tall for this. Um, hi, my name is Noah Tang. I am a history teacher at Bloomington High School uh, and the leader of the local uh, Strong Towns conversation here in Bloomington. Um, I come here just like my two previous speakers, uh, urging you to support the streetscape plan. And you've heard me in the last couple of meetings uh, are urging your support for the streetscape plan. Um, and I'm 100% confident that this council will make the right decision and vote in support of that. However, I do think that the streetscape plan is not the only thing we should do to continue to revitalize our downtown and core neighborhoods. Uh, importantly, when we're talking about the economic driving factors such as Rivian um, and other major expansions of um, factories around town and other businesses, we really, really need to take a look at uh, more housing, right? The last EDC report came out, and I think it might be out of date as well, uh, 7,000 units short of housing. Um, and I really, really want to make sure that this council, this city makes infill core development easier um, for affordable housing. Um, now, I was uh, quite sad to see that the uh, laborers um, Public Housing Division, Affordable Housing Division pulled their uh, agenda item on this uh, night, but I would really love to see another project, something like that, pop up near downtown as well. Um, when we build housing near downtown, we're allowing everyone to live and enjoy the area of downtown. Um, when you have a 24-hour district like you see in these uh, larger touristy cities, uh, you really feel the liveliness. And I think it's very important when we're talking about economic revitalization, uh, 
a lot of it has to do as well with a psychology, a group psychology. What does the downtown look like? How do people act downtown, um, et cetera? And when we upkeep the streets, I think that's important, but I also think we need to look at the uh, empty buildings, the facades uh, that are crumbling and uh, money that we need to spend on finding pl people, uh, pa places for people to live. Right. So I, I would love to see downtown to return to its heyday with um, more housing, more affordable housing. So not just uh, the very wealthy could enjoy it, but uh, everyone can have access to downtown. Um, on top of that, I want to make sure that our downtown is accessible to people of all ages. So don't just go there uh, expecting to spend money. My uh, students often say there's nothing really to do in Bloomington. And then I point them to a map and I list out every single thing. Um, but I, I think it's very important that uh, the best marketing for a city is the quality of your downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Zach Carlson, and then to follow will be Vicki Tilton. Uh, hello, my name is Zach Carlson. I'm going to try and get through my short list here pretty quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, I do want to uh, agree with others that have said, and do please pass the, the downtown streetscape plan. Um, it is very important that we see this, and this is the only time, one of the only times you'll see me and the Economic Development Council and the CEOs agree on the same thing. Uh, if you know me, yeah. Um, on that note, um, on the housing, as Noah brought up, and I saw in the GLT article that the affordable housing was pulled for momentarily, I would urge the city, I'm sure you all are already in talks, but to give them whatever they want. And also whatever they want for the budget to give them, give them that plus double. A um, couple other things. Uh, I just want to kind of make fun of Young America really quick. I think it's absurd that they're only paying $1,800 in property taxes. I know that was the agreement. Um, however, going forward, I'd like to see that addressed and changed to where we don't give million dollar companies tax incentives that great to do what they could already afford. We know they exploit our town. They can have done that on their own. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, uh, Tim, I want to congratulate you on your new job. Um, and I want to put on public record, I call it dibs on your job. Uh, I've been saying that since I heard the, the news. Uh, so dibs is the number one rule. So I expect a contract uh, in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, one more thing, but I'm going to end it there. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Vicki Tilton. And then uh, last will be Serena Fish. I did say five public commenters, but there were six. So I can't, my miscount. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Vicki Tilton. I'm a downtown resident, property owner, and business owner. Um, Mayor, City Council, staff, thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, I have to start out by saying how sad and even emotional I am when I heard that Tim Gleason was going to be leaving us. But what I'm happy about is all the positive energy that Tim has brought to the office of our city manager pleased with the systems that he's put in place or helped to put in place, and more so the team that he has put together to lead those systems. One of the most visible projects, of course, has been the downtown streetscape project. This is the most complete plan I have ever seen for our downtown in 25 plus years. I've been through all those other ones that are on the shelf somewhere here. Uh, we have a great momentum on this plan. It's been thoroughly thought through and it has had public input to take into consideration the taxpayers' feelings. I encourage the council to approve the Downtown for Everyone plan and to move ahead with the first phase of this project. The final comment I have is to wish Tim Gleason the very best in his next endeavor, but also to ask the council to continue to work together for common goals that will benefit not only the city of Bloomington, but this community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last up we have Serena Fish. My name is Serena Fish. I'm head of West Side Neighbors. Um, I'm on the PSCRB board and managed to get in the middle of a lot of things because I care about my community. 
Unfortunately, this whole project stops about two blocks that way and two blocks this way. As you come over the bridge, you have a tent city. It's getting bigger and bigger and it's getting rougher and rougher. As you come over the bridge now, going south out of downtown, there started another tent city. Uh, this weekend, we had some major problems there where we had to call the police. And uh, I did get response from the mayor. I got response from the Bloomington Police Department. Um, and the person that was causing was uh, threatening to shoot people, uh, stab people, all the above. Um, they put her off of the property. She then went back to the tent city and lied and said a lot of things about two of the businesses that are down where they started the new thing. Luckily, one of the people that is in the new tent city under the bridge um, made it a point to go to the old tent city and say, no, she's not telling the truth. So now we have two tent cities. You have empty buildings here, empty buildings there, and I have gone to all the meetings. I've gone to the presentations and I don't see anything for what's going to happen two blocks that way, two blocks this way. And when you run out of city this way and you hit the bridge north and south. We've had people coming from the 10th city where you Great citizens have given them gift cards to buy groceries. They come into our store to sell the gift cards. Just so everybody knows, they're given two meals a day. So there is no reason they are not eating. They're lying. Front and center, the old, I think it was May Company building, front and center, and I, I know something's going to be happening. There is a dead bird in the window, and it's been there forever. That's pretty much the way most of us on the west side are looking at this because you don't seem to care about what's going on on the west side. You're more concerned building bars, building restaurants downtown that we cannot shop at. Thank so you. keep it all in mind. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I am finished. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, There's okay. no further public comment. No further public comment. Are we sure? Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the consent agenda. If I remember correctly, Council Member Bolin wanted to... Made the motion to mm -hmm. approve. Okay, is there a second? Second. To... Okay, second by Council Member Dannenberger. <laughs> um, are we... The, the electronic voting is working, right? Okay, awesome. That looks fancier than usual. Yeah. Hands of colors, green, yellow. And it's all done. Huh? There we go. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the, uh, the item passes. There are no nays to announce. And now we are going to move to uh, regular agenda item uh, 8A, uh, a consideration and action on an ordinance to adopt and uh, appropriate uh, the fiscal year 2025. And I am going to turn it over to city manager Gleason um, for introductory uh, remarks. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mayor and Council, and uh, to the community. Uh, very brief comments before I turn the floor over to uh, Scott Rathbun, Finance Director, to uh, bring the uh, FY25 uh, budget across the finish line. Very proud of this budget, as I have been in uh, past uh, budgets uh, that staff has presented to Council, Council making those uh, very tough decisions. I'm hoping the community uh, appreciates uh, the integrity in the process. We take great pride in uh, being very open, uh, engaged with the uh, community, trying to explain how we as stewards of the taxpayer dollars uh, use those dollars and uh, very proud of what I will call an accomplishment uh, that uh, will go before council uh, here in a couple of minutes after a brief uh, reca uh, recap presentation by Scott. Scott. Uh, thank you, City Manager, Mayor, Council. Um, this is the sixth and final um, presentation for this budget, and then we start, you know, with the reporting next year of the variances as we go through. So we did the proposed on March 11th, public hearing on the 25th. So, so tonight we're presenting uh, the adoption of the FY25 uh, budget. Uh, consistency, I, I believe in. We're going to be going through the same exhibits. I will not be going through the details, but just kind of highlighting them. But this this um, presentation is online for the public to view at their leisure, along with the other resources. Next slide, please. So as I've mentioned, um, it's, a, it's a, a strong budget, and it's emphasizing uh, public safety, road, sidewalks, dependable infrastructure, such as clean drinking water, and public well-being. You know, our parks and rec and entertainment cultural divisions are very important for the community, too. There are competing interests. We would try to address those through our meetings with council and community and talking with uh, what I view as our experts, expert staff and our directors. So the citywide budget, 331.7 million, almost 332 million. Uh, general fund, 143 million. And capital projects, nearly $89 million uh, in capital projects this coming year, a significant dollar amount of the budget uh, going towards those capital projects. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a, an exhibit that we presented for the last couple of years showing uh, the kind of the operating growth um, of the budget, kind of taking that gross budget and then removing out um, some of the, the variables uh, from year to year, uh, specifically the capital projects. And this indicates that we've been we've grown at about 4% in the last 10 years uh, for uh, on, the, on the overall budget. And then on salary benefits, uh, another point of interest, because we have added a lot of staff, we have needed the staff, we reduced staff a lot in 2010, um, we've grown at about 3.6% in the last 10 years. Next slide, please. Um, this exhibit highlights uh, the complexity of our uh, financial structure. We do have 29 funds. Not every fund is listed here. We've combined some funds uh, that are similar in makeup. Uh, this shows the variances uh, year to year in our budget. And this is how we typically re refer to our budget as a variance from the prior year. So this highlights uh, those, those increases or decreases uh, at the fund level. We have had increases in staff. I've mentioned several times about the increases in public safety, equipment and projects. We've moved. We've had to move some equipment expenses forward from the future years into this current year due to uh, timeline restrictions or the window uh, pre-ordering for the fire trucks. Inflation, and then we've had increases, uh, a large increase in our public safety pensions uh, from year to year of about 2.4 million. Next slide, please. Uh, major tax revenues. We have taken these up. Um, you can see with this group of uh, tax revenues by about 10.6 million dollars a year to year. We've been trending higher the last couple of years. Uh, we've kept um, the the budget flat, you know, into 23 and 24. But we are recognizing that that trend is probably is going to stick through 25. So we have taken taking those major tax revenues uh, up. Um, you know, 9.25 percent. I will say that's material. Um, you know, we are. Uh, Keeping our eyes on uh, the, the state budget where the gov governor is uh, proposing a, a repeal of the uh, grocery tax, a 1% repeal, and that, that could impact, uh, you know, these tax revenues by 2 .5 to $3 million. But we'll watch that and we'll, uh, we'll act accordingly if need be. Next slide, please. Citywide revenues. Um, at, uh, I've already mentioned, you know, the tax revenue increase and the, and the other remaining increases really are related to uh, borrowing for projects. And then uh, the increases, especially for water, the, um, those surcharges for services. So water fees are going up substantially for FY25. And then we have recurring fees uh, in sewer and storm that go up as well. And then I will highlight as well that you know we are uh, targeting to use $43.6 million of reserves. So utilizing um, the, the community's uh, cash towards projects 
and other infrastructure in this coming fiscal year. Next slide, please. Um, expenditures, you can see the variance from year to year. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we've had staff, equipment, projects, inflation, and pensionary increases that are kind of driving that overall number. Next slide, please. General fund revenues. Um, again, you know, most of the tax revenues that we just highlighted are really uh, directed to, to the uh, general fund. So you can see that there's $8.9 million in tax increases uh, just for that are booked into the general fund. Uh, specifically, and so the other remaining increase here really um, is in the, the tax, or in, excuse me, in the total revenues is the use of reserves. So $8.7 million up from $3.4 million the year before. We've had increases in, in what we're addressing in, in the capital project side of things and the equipment side of things, as I mentioned. Next slide, please. Uh, general fund expenditures, uh, same topics that I just mentioned as far as driving those expense increases. Staff, increases in staff, um, we added nine public safety uh, employees, seven in police, two in fire, um, equipment, projects, inflation, and pensions. Next slide, please. A general fund by function. I left, left, we left this exhibit in for this, um, for this presentation. This highlights by category the general fund, which is the largest fund, and it's 43% of the entire uh, budget. And shows again, you know, our emphasis on public safety and the, and the commitment that we have there. You know, $69 million uh, related to public safety total budget for the year. And then also on the right side, it shows, you know, the offset of expenditures that a lot of these, um, these departments within the general fund have related to generating revenues uh, to kind of drive their own um, or, or um, pay for their own services, especially parks. I like to highlight that, you know. This, this includes the BCPA as well. We're still including that in that category. We'll split it out next year. $15.5 million total expenditure, but $11.4 million net. So, you know, the difference between being the revenues generated in that and those departments. Next slide, please. Uh, capital projects. Um, we highlighted all the details in the capital projects during the Committee of the Whole in February. You know, $88.5 million. It's an $18.8 uh, million increase over the prior year. And then you can see over on the right, uh, you know, the categorical um, set up for those projects, you know, $43 million in streets and sidewalks. That's the that's total uh, motor fuel, state motor fuel tax of the 33 million plus 10 million for asphalt and concrete, water, sewer and storm water, 34 million. And then taking care of what we have, addressing, you know, needs at the police department, city hall, setting aside money for um, the fire department as well. Next slide, please. So the, the final perspective on the budget, you know, it's, it's 332 million, you know, how do we divide it down? Um, $215 million is, is really um, targeted towards direct services that touch every single person in the community, every resident. So water, sewer, storm, garbage, public safety, um, public works, and, and all these projects. So a, a direct touch on the community, uh, $215 million. And then you can see $7.8 million in other support related to McLean County Health, IDA, CDBG, Connect Transit. And then skipping down, you know, some of those dollars at work, we did a lot of description a lot of detailing of, you know, kind of the, how those dollars manifest themselves, you know, on the ground level for the community. 82,000 supported police and fire service runs in the last full year reported. You know, 69 million, I covered that in, in total budget for um, public safety, which is actually 21% of our total overall citywide budget. 1,000 miles of, of sewer and water lines, 17,000 tons of trash, that's 34 million pounds, and 600,000 visitors to our parks and, and that public well-being. And then at the bottom, can't skip that, the ultimate goal of the budget, good stewards of taxpayers' funds. Again, there's always competing interests, but trying to address those as best we can. Next slide, please. And for the adoption for, for tonight, um, as last year, um, you know, we have a council member that has a, a tie to the McLean County uh, Museum. We uh, support the museum with $45,000, so we're going to pull that out of the adoption number so that the full council can can vote on the majority of the budget. So tonight we'll be voting on the 331 million, 623,992. And then the general fund information is just there as an FYI. Next slide, please. And then as usual, want to remind uh, the community, a lot of resources online, uh, the budget books, they're somewhat intimidating, you know, 300 plus pages each, but there's a table of contents, hyperlinks in there. Looking, look for uh, things you're, uh, that you're curious about, hit click on the hyperlink, you can find all the details on the budget projects, what all the departments do, um, all the detail uh, account numbers, you know, that we utilize uh, to develop the budget, you know, are online. We have video series uh, and any, any kind of 
way you want to look at the budget, I, I, we're trying to uh, provide that to the community. Next slide, please. So again, um, I'd like to recommend to the council to adopt the FY25 budget as presented in the amount of $331,623,992. I'll slide, make please. a motion to approve. A second. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You could have let me ask at least. <laughs> I, I have a question. <laughs> Uh, so we have a motion by Council Member Bolin and second by Council Member Ward. Okay. And, and now we have a question. A question. Yes. Yeah. I know that for the past three, four years, um, we've been paying cash for, well, we, we weren't leasing. We were paying cash for equipment. And um, I finally got down to the very last page in the budget books. And I noticed there's like 4,000 or no, 4 million. Um, for capital lease, is there yeah. a reason for the change? There's not, not all the funds can um, pay cash for their equipment. So okay. uh, solid waste, storm, sewer, those are kind of the three funds that usually need some help. Okay. Sometimes golf. And we have done some subsidies this past year, like for golf, you know, with the um, their okay. carts. But yeah, so we usually, we budget it. And then if we have dollars available, we may come back to council and say, you know, maybe we want to do a subsidy to those other funds because the general fund is, is doing well save those funds, interest expense, and then, you know, we'll do a budget amendment then. Okay. Fair enough, I knew you had a good explanation. <laughs> okay, question? I'm wondering if you could pull up slide three again. So the, the um, evolving growth in the capital projects. I just wanted to talk about that just for a moment because that's the one line item that's significantly trended higher over these last you know, eight years. Um, so as we look at this budget uh, this time around, um, how much of this 88.5 million in capital projects is funding for the phase one streetscape? Zero. I appreciate you clarifying that. Um, you know, I, I think um, that's something that, you know, we should know as we reflect on this budget, which already reflects a 14% increase over the prior year. Um, the other piece that I just wanted to clarify is the um, slide where we're talking about how much we're spending on road, road work um, at, in the 40 million range. Slide 11. And you do a fantastic job Scott, um, really, I mean, so much information and so very helpful. Um, this is another piece, though, where I get a lot of phone calls from folks. I have one um, precinct where 80% of their roads are in the fair or below category in our own PACER rating system. And on this line item, um, what comprises the 43 million? And I'll start by just sharing what I know, um, which is on our actual spend for what my constituents would see as road work, um, that amount hasn't increased from the prior year. And with inflation, uh, I believe we're touching, you know, only about 1.7% uh, of our streets with that work, um, whereas we were closer to 2% last year. So we're spending the same amount, but we're actually touching, um, you know, our roads uh, less in terms of just our existing roads. So could you clarify what else is included in the 43 million where the headlines have, you know, talked about how much we're spending in streets? Well, a, a large chunk of that is related to the state motor fuel tax. And so that's the Fox Creek Road and Bridge um, projects. That's $15 million. And then the Hamilton Road um, project as well. So $33 million are those that those large projects. There's some other items within the state motor fuel tax. And then for asphalt and concrete, um, so I'm just gonna read it as we have, we have um, published. You know, 6.2 million is in the multi-year street and alley reservice program. $1 million for multi-year concrete subdivision repair program. 2 million for sidewalk repair and 820,000 for emergency multi-year street and alley sidewalk repairs, and that totals the 10 million. 
One of the things that I noticed when we were hearing about the year in review of the street um, expenditures is that emergency repair component, um, it sounds like is a uh, factor because of the underspending to touch our roads um, you know, more frequently for uh, ongoing maintenance. As I understand it, the average life expectancy of, of uh, the roads that we have is 20 to 25 years, but we're only touching them for repairs about every 50 years based on the current spend. Um, so I, I just bring that up because I do think it's important. And when we look at this budget having gone up 14%, it's, it's not about the big things, it's about that, but it's also about the little things. And there was one, um, you know, expenditure that I, I know I had some conversations about that was in the district that I represent with support of the folks, um, you know, in that area. And um, we, we didn't need to have that money in the budget. And, you know, I, that's, that's meaningful, I think, to share um, because there are opportunities for us to show more constraint. Um, and I, I'm certainly offering grace on this, that I understand that there's a big difference between what we are budgeting and what we are spending and in our actuals. And that's my last question for you, Scott. If you don't mind, just, you know, maybe a three-year look back here. Um, how much have we actually spent as opposed to what we, what we have in our budget? Can we go back to slide three, please? So... There's, there's a line that's two thirds of the way down called actual plus encumbrances. So, you know, we, we include anything that's been encumbered, it's been approved by council on POs. And so you can see the, um, the totals there, you know, if you want to just highlight uh, 2016, you know, a total budget of 186.3 and an actual plus encumbrance of 172.1. So, you know, typically the material difference between the actual, the material difference between the actual and um, the total citywide budget has been projects that have been rolled to the next year. I didn't, I didn't have that column in this exhibit for this presentation, and I can't remember the total, but just highlighting the state motor fuel tax, those two large projects have been rolled every year for the last, Councilmember mm -hmm. Boland will know. Um, so that's been a you know 20 some million dollar underage every, every year just from that perspective. I mean, I think that's really important for the public to know because when you look at this. Give me a quick second. I know we have, what, two, three minutes left? I know we have Tom who also wants to speak. Okay. I just want to make sure we get the time up. No, I appreciate that. I think I think these details are important. At least they're important to the folks who have reached out uh, to me. Um, so I really appreciate that, Scott. I'll uh, yield the rest of the time here to uh, to Tom and anyone else. But um, thank you very much for clarifying those things. Okay, Councilmember Crumpler, and then Ward. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, and I appreciate, you know, your your, your um, attention to details. It matters a lot. So thank you for that. Um, you know, we've listened to detailed discussions and presentations on this budget. Thank you, Scott. And it's been so thorough. Um, I feel like I understand this budget better than I ever have before in um, previous budgets. And so, you know, and I recognize as a council, we are promising the taxpayers in this community a lot in terms of projects, infrastructure, uh, repair, and a safe community. And I believe we can deliver. I think this is a moment when we have an opportunity to move Bloomington forward in ways that our residents can see and appreciate that this council is managing and investing its tax dollars wisely. And I plan to vote um, to approve this budget. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lord. Thank you, Mr. Rathbun, for your work, not only tonight in explaining this, but over the last few weeks, months, meetings um, to help us understand this. I am voting in favor of this budget because I believe that it helps us as a city to um, as a city council to live up to one of our, our most important obligations, and that is to be good stewards of the, the city taxpayers' funds. Um, ultimately, it comes down to that, and I wouldn't, wouldn't um, miss the opportunity to be able to, to vote for a budget like this. I think this budget helps us to avoid two really important temptations. You mentioned earlier um, competing priorities. 
I think in a in a society that is as polarized as we are, it would be very tempting at times to to go go all one way or all another way. And I see this budget as one that that avoids that temptation. It it doesn't put all of our eggs in one basket. It helps us to to approach a number of different competing concerns and issues that matter to people rather than simply focusing on one thing all the time. I also think that rather than being reactive, this, this um, budget avoids the temptation to be reactive and allows us to be proactive. It thinks forward. It doesn't just think about the potholes right in front of us. Those are important, believe me. But it also allows us to be proactive and think forward about the issues that are coming down the line. And so for that reason, I would call the question. Okay. Well, thank you. I think we had a, did we have a motion? Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, you already have a motion. Um, you have a motion by Council Member Bolin, seconded by Council Member Ward to pre uh, approve as presented. Okay, now I remember, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, so is everybody ready to vote? Okay. Okay, so we have uh, one nay to announce. Council Member Motney. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to um, the next item, and I'm going to turn it over to um, Scott Rathbun. Thank you, Mayor. This is just an amendment. Yeah, he needs to recuse himself. As described in the in the previous presentation, to amend the FY25 budget for the forty-five thousand dollars. And I will remind the mayor and community. And the council uh, that we will be publishing, assuming that this um, forty-five thousand dollar amendment passes, we will be pu publishing the budget in total as it was presented prior to the forty-five thousand dollars being removed. So I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, motion by Council Member uh, Boland, second by Council Member Ward. Any questions? No. Your light is up. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and vote. Your box is showing gray. It's showing that you have not voted yet. So you can go ahead and click your button again um, and it'll turn blue. First time in the system. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, the item passes. There are no days to announce. Uh, Now we're going to move on to item C, consideration and action on a resolution adopting the Downtown for Everyone Streetscape Program uh, report volumes one through three as requested by the administration department. And I'm going to turn it over to Deputy City Manager uh, Tyus um, for some introductory remarks. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor and City Council members. Um, exciting day for us again. Um, We've talked a lot about the streets, downtown streetscape project, the downtown for everyone plan. Um, but, you know, it, we've talked about the fact that it's a roadmap for making generational changes to our, our downtown and to our city. What does that really mean? I mean, it's, it's a big word, literally. And um, what does it mean? You know, it, it's for us, it's about more than the landscaping and lighting and streets, et cetera, et cetera. It's about creating a destination for local residents, both from from our community, but also from the region. Um, it's about really getting our house in order and meeting really specific community needs. Again, what do I mean by that? First of all, you know, from years of working in community and economic development, I know for a fact that site selectors look at the condition of your downtown when making a decision about where they're gonna go. I know for a fact that 
people looking for jobs in your community, look at the condition of your downtown and, and its level of vibrancy, et cetera, et cetera, and making a decision as to where they're going to live. So it becomes a, a locator tool, but it also becomes a recruitment tool for lack of a, a better way to describe it for employees. Um, and we both know that economic de development matters to us. We also know how difficult it is to recruit employees for all businesses today. So this type of work matters in the grand scheme of trying to address those issues. Uh, I think Zach said earlier, frankly, we wanna create spaces, uh, you know, it means creating spaces, giving people things to do downtown other than shopping and dining and vis visiting our, you know, our wonderful museum. It gives, it creates activity spaces for folks to come and do things. Um, we've talked a lot over the last several weeks about this being an infrastructure project in addition to the exciting sizzle that you see. But again, what does that mean? You talk about criticality, and I know there were some questions. I think Councilmember Montney sent some questions this afternoon that we were not able to get to because I was out, frankly. But hopefully we'll be able to get to some of those questions. What does critical infrastructure mean? You know, one of the things that we did in, in determining which infrastructure needs to be replaced as part of this is that we looked at life expectancy. You mentioned it earlier about roads. Um, we looked at the fact that certain infrastructure is expected to last a certain number of years. And so we said, if it's only going to last this number of years, we need to work to replace it so we don't have to come back in and tear out the streetscape and replace it. So I think that was 20 years. You know, you talk about infrastructure such as filling underground sidewalk faults. Well, I'm not gonna sit here and say that our sidewalks are failing right now, but you don't want our sidewalk faults to fail. You do not want to wait until they fail before you replace them. So filling sidewalk, underground sidewalk vaults is a part of the work that we're doing, is, would be doing as part of this project. You know, those, those vaults become safety issues as moisture leaks into them and Midwest weather hits them. Uh, it just, it, it happens. Right now, our sidewalks literally have like hollow spaces under them because the vaults are there. You don't want to wait for them to fail in our opinion. Um, we've talked about combined sewers a lot with the Locust Colton project. We've got a number of combined sewers in our downtown. Again, I think you mentioned is it, it's not a mandate that we separate those sewers, but it's a health issue in that when you have heavy rains with systems that are combined, you have backups and that's not healthy for your community. And so again, the EPA has not said replace your combined sewers, but you don't want combined sewers in your downtown or in any area, frankly. Um, like I said, um, when, you have, when you don't have separated sewers, it backs up into Benward and it impacts their ability to treat it. Um, it becomes an issue. I don't know if any of you, frankly, have been downtown when there's a heavy rain and you smell it. You know, that's, it's, it's not a comfortable thing for our downtown restaurants. So you don't want that. Um, replacing combined sewers is a big part of this work. Um, underground drainage that's being proposed as part of this first project. It, it complements the work that is being recommended with the E Street Basin. It's not an either or, it complements that work and it will without question help us to address flooding in our community. Um, we all were here, I, I think all of us were here, um, a couple of years ago when we had the heavy rains and we had the significant flooding. We're looking for solutions to that. The downtown drainage that is a part of this first project being recommended helps with that, in addition to the E Street Basin uh, that is being proposed as well. Downtown streets, are they passable? Yes but do we want passable streets in our community or do we want better? I don't think there's anybody sitting here that would not agree that while there are certain segments that are in decent shape, there's a lot of segments of our downtown streets that are, are they're a mess. I mean, they just are, and I don't mind saying that, they are. I think we're better than that. And so a part of the work that is being proposed tonight addresses those issues and more. And so um, before you tonight are, are, are two agenda items, one, a resolution adopting the streetscape plan and a second item for specific dine, uh, design for the recommended first project. And it includes a budget amendment to pay for it. And it also includes an amendment to address some work that has happened that in part was necessary in order to get us to this point. And it looks like I'm out of time, but I know that the manager, perhaps he's not, he's saying no. And so with that, we'll take any questions that you may have. Okay, uh, thank you, Billy. And if, first of all, let me say kudos to you because I know that's been your uh, um, 
your puppy, should I say? <laughs> um, you've been working on this project for uh, quite a bit of time, and I think it's it's important we recognize how much time and effort you've put into it and in bringing people together. So, uh, yeah, really appreciate that, and all the others who worked on it, including the stakeholders. I, I think uh, this is uh, you know it is nice for it to come together uh, in this way. Um, and as was um, reflected earlier, there have been many iterations of downtown streetscape plans, but I am glad that we're finally where we have something uh, that will not sit on the shelf. So appreciate that. Is there, um, but first, I think we should probably start with a motion. Yeah, I'd like to motion to approve it. Okay. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, uh, well, motion by Council Member Dannenberger, second by Council Member Ward. And yeah. you mean Hendricks and then Ward? Yes. Okay. Oh, Hendricks. Sorry. What did I say? Dannenberger. It's Dannenberger. Okay. No, we it's, it's Hendricks. Right. It's Hendricks. You guys look close. Look alike, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have comments. Comments. Okay. Well, then let's, let's start with that then. Comments. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Billy. And as the councilman for the affected ward, I'm super excited that we are finally at this day. And I really want to thank all the individuals who have put in countless hours uh, through meetings and, and public input sessions, the developers, the stakeholder groups, obviously city staff and the larger community who you know, came to the meetings and, and also submitted different comments online. Um, when I ran, this was a key component uh, of my campaign. And I said that um, we would see this plan approved, but more than that, we'd make sure it's not a plan that just sits on a shelf. Uh, so I hear you loud and clear, Vicki. Um, so both of today's votes make sure that that's the case and it's only the beginning uh, for our downtown. You know, as Billy said, uh, this plan is not only a beautification plan, but more than that, it's an infrastructure plan, right? Uh, and even a step further, it's an investment plan in our historic uh, economic incubator core. Uh, it addresses roads, sidewalks, accessibility issues, issues with uh, or increases pedestrian friendly access, upgrades our museum square, adds public art and enhances our green areas of the downtown. Um, and really, to me, more than that, it's also a recommitment to the decades of hard work, decades of hard work uh, that so many of the individuals and businesses in our downtown uh, have put you know, all of that energy in. And this is our recommitment to them for that energy that they uh, put in to keep our downtown going. I also see this as a major generational step, right? This is a decision that's going to take a long time, um, and it's gonna be something that will probably, uh, it's gonna outlast, I would assume, a majority of us when we finally see it finished. Um, and as we've heard tonight, you know, I also heard countless and countless echoes of support, um, and that's why I'm so thrilled uh, with this plan. And I would just uh, close with, you know, I know some individuals might be a little shy with the price tag that we have listed, but you know, this is the plan that sets the vision for what our downtown could be. Right, So I say to pass this plan and then let us uh, hash out and, and do the arguing and whatever that may look like uh, for the different phases. Um, but after we have this plan, that opens us up to access of grant funding, hopefully you know, at the state level and at the federal level. Um, and so you know, I encourage all my colleagues to support this plan. And more than that, I encourage the community to make sure to hold us to it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Councilmember Boland and then uh, Councilmember Ward. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I will be voting in favor of this. Uh, as Councilmember Hendricks said, having the plan will allow us to apply for special grants throughout the uh, from the federal or state government. So I am going to push for that and hold staff accountable that we get the, the grants for this. Um, and I've gotten a lot of uh, emails and texts from the business community. And I'm going to say this. Um, there are some things that I would like to, uh, in the plan that I would like to maybe not change, but address. And one specifically is so, uh, solicit a bus shelter on Washington Street in that plaza in front of the museum instead of 
just a bus stop where people will have to stand to wait for the bus. Do you know what I'm, what I'm talking about? Okay. And speaking to the business community, the city is putting out a carpet, the infrastructure. It is up to you to bring in the furniture, which means the investments. And I am going to hold you accountable as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Board. Thank you. There are a lot of great reasons to vote yes for this plan. Um, we've heard quite a few of those reasons already, thanks to our public speakers. I would suggest that we've also seen probably the biggest reason to vote in favor of this, and that is that downtowns bring the community together. We've seen that tonight simply by the fact that so many people from different walks of life have spoken in favor of this plan. Um, I would also add that as a West Sider, as a representative of Ward 7, Ward 7 isn't in downtown. We are neighbors to downtown. And what happens to my neighbors happens to me and has an impact on me. And I think that this plan is a wonderful example of that in the sense that the in order to get to downtown, you have to walk through other wards, you have to walk through other neighborhoods, you have to drive through other neighborhoods. And the more people who drive through our neighborhoods, who walk through our neighborhoods, see what's going on all around us, and it spreads. The other reason that I would say that, that this has an impact on people who are not downtown has to do with what's already been said about the infrastructure I saw what happened, I walked through, I smelled, I helped to clean out what happened in June of 2021. It wasn't pretty. And this plan speaks to that issue. It speaks to the infrastructure changes that will have an impact on my neighborhood, on my neighbors. And so for that reason, I support this. These are not cosmetic changes. It will be beautiful, but it's not superficial because this is more than skin deep. Okay, thank you. Council Member Becker. So when this plan came up, um, I voted against the plan. I'll, I'll be very transparent with that. And I voted against it because I, not because I didn't want the project but because I was concerned about the spending and how long the plan was gonna take and how much money was gonna go into it, but I thought we could do it more efficiently. Um, I've, I've gone back and forth on this a lot, but I wanna just give you this, this perspective for a second. I looked at all the reasons to, you know, where people question down uh, streetscape type plans. You can't guarantee their success. We need other investments from the private side. I looked at all of that and I did a lot of reading and. And all that's true. The other, the flip side that is very true is communities that don't invest in their downtown seal their fate. If you don't do this, if you don't do something, you have a major problem. So I came here tonight planning to support this and I do support the concept. To be honest with you, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna click yes or no on the vote yet because there are some things in the plan. How many, I wanna, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but of the people that spoke, how many of you read the thousand pages that were out there on this? Do you actually know what you're asking us to vote for? Okay, I didn't read all thousand pages. I skimmed as much as I could, but there are some things in there that I think are materially wrong. The concept is great. I want the concept, I want us to get started on it, but there are some things that need to change in that plan and in the supporting documents that are wrong and their material potentially, or maybe I just don't understand them, but there's material things in there that, that we need answered. I would have hoped that we could have tabled this for two weeks to get those answered first. Maybe the answer is we, we trust that in the process of voting on the next stages, we get these cleaned up. There's a lot of people that would not be happy with that. 
I don't know. Like I said, I'm not 100%. I want to see this go forward. I believe it's a great thing for the city. I believe the engineers that worked on this um, did exactly what I asked for last time in making it a phased plan and making infrastructure a very big part of it. So they did exactly what we wanted. It gave us the flexibility to do this in the right way. But I do think there are some things that we as a council need to commit to catching some of the errors as we go forward on the next votes, if we pass this. Thank you. Okay, Council Ravani. I just have a procedural question kind of in light of this. We're, we're voting on two separate things, right? We're voting on the um, plan itself, which we've now had the opportunity to, to read. And um, you know, it was kind of a badge of honor. I mean, I did actually read it and, and you know, um, uh, Deputy City Manager Tyus, I mean, one of the things about the combined sewers is it did not indicate that they would all be decoupled. It said if practical in some cases. So there is some ambiguity around that. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, there's the handoff associated with the plan itself. Um, so it sounds like then we will separately be voting separately on the body of work which is effectively um, you know, an extension of time um, to do more detailed work before we ever see the, the value creation. Is, is that correct? Um, so we'll, we'll have, an, uh, we'll have um, we will not be digging and making changes for about another nine months or more. Is that correct? I don't completely understand your question, but I'll, I'll tell you what we're, we would be doing tonight. The first item is to adopt or reject the streetscape plan as presented as a final plan, as a plan. The second item, there are several things that are part of it, the big part of which is an agreement to make do the very specific construction designs for a first project, which has been recommended uh, by the steering committee, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, the designs we've had so far, are more conceptual, although there's been some very detailed work to, to come up with it. But a second agenda item is to consider an item for a for construction design to actually be able to bid the work out and do a first project. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna vote presumably on the motion from right. our colleague mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then and then we will have the opportunity to ask questions relative to the second vote. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and vote. Okay, so the item passes. There are no nays to announce. Thank you. We are now going to move on to this item D, right? Yes, item D, okay. Uh, a consideration and action on one, an ordinance amending the budget ordinance uh, for the fiscal year ending uh, April 30th, 2024. And then two, a resolution approving an agreement with Crawford Mur Murphy and Tilly Incorporated for the development and construction drawings for the North Main Street project as part of the Downtown for Everyone uh, program in an amount not to exceed $1,050,000 and a change order in the amount not to exceed $100,000 as requested by the Department of Operation and Engineering Services and the Administration Department. So we're gonna go back to Deputy City Manager uh, uh, Tyus, so you can explain all of that to us. And Mayor, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Thank you, Mary, appreciate it. Uh, really quick, a couple things I'd like to do. One is I'd like to invite Mike Sewell and Chris Strissel and Chant to the table if you would come because they're the engineering firm that, that we're recommending uh, the agreement with. The second thing I'd like to ask before I do go into this is see if the manager has any comments. I know that you this has been something that's been near and dear to your heart as well. Is there anything you want to say before we go into this? Just in general on this to uh, the community, uh, just my gratitude. You know, I, I love a challenge and uh, this definitely was that. Uh, the uh, Public comments uh, this evening uh, were spot on, uh, captured everything that I feel. 
you know, there was a process involved in this, and it was the community outreach uh, that occurred over the past several months. And to the mayor's point and other council members, truly Deputy City Manager uh, Tyus ran the lead on this. You know, a promise and a pledge that we had was, uh, you know, to get this right, uh, to uh, try to get people that, uh, you know, have been involved in the past back on board with the pledge that this is not going to set on a shelf and collect dust. And that's exactly why you see this second follow-up item uh, in this very same council meeting. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate it. So really quickly for everyone, what this item does is there's an item recommending an agreement with CMT for the development of construction drawings, which are completely different than the concepts that we've come up with today. Um, they're based on that work and based in large part on, on that work. That work had to happen in order to get us to this point. Um, there is a budget ordinance, a recommended approval of a budget ordinance amendment amending the um, the budget for this year in order to be able to pay for it. Um, a lot of questions often come up related to you want to do something like this. How do you pay for it? Well, in this case, we're, we're making a we're recommending a budget budget amendment in order to pay for this agreement because it's during this this fiscal year. Again, Council Member Motney, you mentioned you asked the question. You know, is there anything in next year's budget being proposed for this project? And Scott rightly answered no. There are a couple of reasons for that. One, it would be absolutely presumptuous of us to put a number in the budget, not knowing where you would go with any of this, realizing, yes, you, you we got to figure out how to pay for it, and we do. But it would have been presumptuous of us. The other thing that you mentioned was the fact that we typically underspend our budget, and we know that in planning for this type of work. So there is room for, for, for funding, but probably most importantly as it relates to paying for this project when the construction drawings are done and if you recommend approval, is that we have said specifically that we would pay for the work uh, both out of reserves and there is room in the reserves to be able to pay for this. So really quickly again, this item is a budget ordinance to pay for this agreement if you approve it, resolution approving the agreement and an adjustment to the original agreement where there was a lot of work that had to happen in order to get us to this point that happened earlier than today. So we're recommending an, an, an amendment to be able to cover that. It's largely an accounting function. Um, you know, for example, in order to get to this point, there was detailed work to design the underground drainage that wasn't in the original scope um, with, with CMT. There was work specifically related to parking at the BCPA lots that wasn't in the original scope that was necessary to figure out hey, if we do this on Main Street in a phase one project, is there room in other places um, to, to provide parking? Now, to be clear, there was other work that had to happen. There was other public input sessions. There were additional um, public meetings that were held. There were additional three-on-one -on meetings that weren't in the original scope, et cetera, et cetera, that this is, would cover. But in large part, it's covering work that needed to be done to get us to this point. And so with that, we will take any questions. I'd make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion by Council Member Hendricks, and I think I heard Council Member Kearns. Okay. Um, I have a question. question. Okay. Council Member Bowling. Oh, it's it's a question comment. Billy, could you make it very clear what we are voting on? because some people seem to think we are voting on the 12, $13 million project rather than a $1 million plan, or, or not a plan, a design, like an engineering design. You said it very well in that in order to get to a point where we can bid out this work, you need construction designs. You need very specific details related to what would be built, which is different than the concept designs that we have, we have come up with today. Those were specific. It's like going from here to here in terms of, of what, you're, what you're planning for. And so tonight, you're absolutely right. It's an agreement to um, provide construction designs for the first phase project, which we have recommended and we've talked about we were going to recommend, going from Jefferson to the North Main um, Plaza, which includes 
the design for drainage. It includes the traditional streetscaping. It, it includes uh, the separations of combined sewers where practical, as you said. Um, it includes designs for all of that kind of work. Having said that, we have in all of this planned for how to, if you approve, if those designs are done, and if you approve of them, and then if you approve of the bids, how to pay for that construction, that first phase. And again, as we've talked about, we've talked about utilizing reserves for that, and we uh, have room for that. No, I understand that. I know but what do. I'm saying, the there are members of the community that think what we are voting on tonight mm -hmm. is that $12, $13 million funding. And that is not what we are doing. That's correct. That I mean, I just wanted to clarify that for the community. Um, and I do have one question. There's nothing that I have seen that um, addresses additional soft costs. Is there any way to figure that out or provide that information um, going forward? And I'm talking about things, it was mentioned in the um, the thing that we're voting on here, this uh, $1 million project about what is and is not covered and the need for other evaluations. I, I would leave that, I would ask Mike or Chris to address that question. However, the what you're approving is the amount that we're spending and for for this for this well work. my my question is 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 there going to be additional soft costs in the sense of consultants or design experts coming in over and above the million i would say no but i would ask chris or mike to address that question the answer is no we included all sub consultants that were necessary to design this project um, the only other potential soft costs that I can even think of would be permit fees. And as far as the, the state agencies, what they would assess, you're talking, I don't know, $2,000 or less. What I can't speak to is whether or not the city of Bloomington would assess a building permit on its own project. And I was involved on one in the past where they did do that. So I, I don't know the answer to that one. Okay. Just want to make sure. I mean, since you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have Councilmember Montney sure. and then Crumpler. So I, I think um, to Councilmember Boland's point, um, we, we really didn't know what we were voting on until this packet came out some point on Friday. Um, and, you know, the contents. Um, you know, 196 pages in one book, um, you know, the packet pages today, 77 more, um, book two, 57 pages, book three, another 588. Um, you know, in total, you know, there were almost a thousand pages for all of the related documentation here, um, much of which supports uh, what we're voting on tonight that was included in this consulting agreement. Um, with the time, it, normally what I would have expected is that we would have done as we have in the past, which is to have the opportunity to meet um, in small groups or at a committee of the whole to ask and answer and get comfortable with many of the questions, such as the ambiguity as to whether or not we truly are decoupling um, you know, the combined sewers. I mean, it, you know, it's one thing to say we are, and then when we read in a packet that we're voting on that says if practical, it introduces ambiguity. And there are many of the components in looking at the prior uh, agreement that we voted on um, 594 days ago uh, that led us to this point um, that appear to also um, be elements carried forward into this agreement, such as the subcontract relative to sewer uh, televising, um, which also had some dependency, I think, along the way as I tried to piece together uh, the facts associated with that. And as we talked about two weeks ago, um, the need for making responsible decisions associated with our infrastructure and it's unique in this phase uh, one proposal in that it represents the low ground. There are a lot of reasons that I think 
you all um, chose this as the first phase. Uh, but I have questions um, that, you know, we, we don't have time um, to go through this evening with eight um, minutes left and with uh, other folks who, who probably want to talk as well. Uh, I would have been much more comfortable um, if we had that opportunity to engage, but from Friday to now, a thousand pages, I think 918 is what I tallied up that I personally looked at. Um, we owe it to our um, constituents, to the residents in this community to ensure uh, some of those questions that I sent in today have been um, carefully considered and any duplication, for example, backed out. Um, if, if we could point just to one page that kind of represents the summary of the fees that we're voting on tonight. Um, and I would um, just, you know, um, encourage uh, those who are here who maybe haven't seen this level of detail to take a look at. Uh, the summary page for what we're voting on tonight is the total direct labor investment of $286,000. Overhead, which is simply 1.7076 times that total direct labor evidently at 489,440, a fixed fee of $97,008. And then total direct costs are listed at 177,005. I think it's um, important if we are to be good stewards of um, the funds available in our community that we take the time to unpack those and to really understand what it is that we're paying for and making sure that's consistent with the collective vision here as opposed to staying at that headline level and just say, we've got the momentum, just go with it. because. Dollars matter, I mean, even if it's just a few, and I'm gonna offer one example. Um, meeting minutes is an example of something that was a line item with this. Um, for the meetings that will take place just during this um, consulting um, and, and engineering drawing phase, more community outreach, et cetera, um, you know, 40 hours at $66 an hour, plus the overhead multiplier. And for limited, you know, number of meetings really, I mean, that, that adds up, those small things add up. Um, and I just don't feel that I would be effectively doing the best I can offer to the city in my role without having the opportunity to make sure all of this is necessary and it hasn't been paid for um, previously. Um, and then I, I did have one actual question, um, which is just noticing that some of the players have changed in this latest agreement. And I noticed, um, you, you know, maybe one or two of the local um, involved uh, contractors are no longer involved. Um, and I just was wondering if you could shed some light um, on that. Uh, Chris, maybe I might need you to help me. I, I think we've, we're moving forward with the exact same team that did the plan. Uh, do you know what contractor are you referring to? Like, for example, Workbench Architects? Or oh. So Workbench, who is now Hewn Architects, they were part of our original team doing the renderings, all the amazing renderings that you guys saw. They are an architecture firm. Now that we're moving into the detailed design, there's no need for either architecture or detailed renderings beyond this point. And there was no equivalent uh, available resources such that again, um, and I'm not intending to try and go down rabbit trails here of details, but there are baked in costs for travel and things like that if we had suitable local, um, you know, landscape organizations that could help. I'm just wondering, um, you know, if we if we bid this out, if we had local folks who had the opportunity to participate. Well, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to announce this or not, but we're going to be opening up an office in downtown Bloomington here in a couple of months. So that'll take care of that part of it. Something I'm very excited about, by the way. Um, it's been a pleasure serving this community as I move to Springfield with CMT and to get back here and do it more effectively, I'm, I'm just so excited about. Um, beyond that, uh, Council Member Montney, you, you did, I, I wanna clarify one thing and that is the combined sewer separation. And uh, I, I take responsibility for the, the 
ambiguity of that language. I'm not sure why I wrote when practical. I can't think of any scenario where it wouldn't be practical. All everywhere downtown, the intent is to completely separate the combined sewer. And that includes this first project. If we had the opportunity to have this conversation and to get these questions answered, um, you know, I, I feel like I would be able to likely, you know, hit that green button, right? Um, but I just feel that there are a number of things that I've put forward and, you know, and asked in advance of the meeting as early as was practical after going through all of this material that remain um, things that I think we, we need to at least have the chance um, to get the responses on. Um, so um, that's, that's my thought. Uh, okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, I think we have, go ahead, what's up? What's up? Can I ask a quick question of the uh, deputy city manager? Sure. Just, just for the sake of the council members that might support this item tonight, just so that it looks like they didn't receive this on a Friday when the agenda packet came out and, uh, and then asked to vote on it on Monday. The bulk of these documents, how long have they been in the hands of council members and what steps uh, three on one meetings have occurred? Uh, the, the bulk of the, the major documents have been in hand. It was a draft for three weeks. We had a draft before council that we gave to council and did three-on-ones, giving the opportunity to ask questions the week prior to that. Um, so four weeks. And then there were the volumes two and three. The, 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 the volumes two and three were sent as an email. I, Mike, tell me when those were sent. You did not have those, but you had them, I think, when I say it was for a couple of weeks? Yeah, it was something like that. I, I suspect, though, the concern is not the volumes one through three, but the, the contract. The, the contract. Okay. Exactly. And, you know, it was it was two weeks mm -hmm. ago, um, just preceding our meeting, that I saw the information for the first time, not including books two and three. So, I mean, just to, to be clear, um, but this agreement that we were voting on today, um, we received, you know, midday on Friday, and that included a lot of meat that required us to go back to do due diligence to look at the details in the other books and also in the prior agreement in order to be confident in what we're looking at. I understand that. I wanted to make sure that I clarify that when you said the thousands of pages, I don't think the the agreement that came on Friday was the thousands of pages. That's what I was specifying in that the agreement, the new thing was the agreement that came on Friday. The other documents came before Friday. That's all I was trying to clarify. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilmember Crumpler, you have uh, 43 seconds. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor, no problem. <laughs> um, I'll be brief. I, I just wanted to comment, you know, several of our, our, our uh, public speakers tonight talked about previous downtown plans that have been shelved or been, have stalled and, and were never realized, and I don't want that to happen. Um, I wanna thank the designers of Streetscape CMT specifically for drawing on those plans, for reading those materials and reaching out to a variety of stakeholders in this community, including the open houses at BCPA, which were very well attended. You know, and I um, represent Ward 9, which is on the northeast side of this city. We are the farthest from downtown Bloomington. And all of my constituents that have contacted me in the last two weeks have supported this supported this plan because, like um, Councilmember Ward mentioned, they benefit from a vibrant downtown, even though they don't live next to it. So I will support this and vote yes on this plan tonight. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Right on time. Time to vote. Okay, so the item passes. There are, there's one nay to announce. Councilmember Motney. Okay. I would like to be clear that having there been time to get the questions answered, I would have been able to support this project. Thank you. We are, um, where are we? Yeah, sure. Yeah, city manager's discussion. I mean, it's, when you have so much fun, sometimes you forget. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, city manager's discussion. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, thank you, Labor, for uh, coming out. 
CEO, council, chamber, uh, economic development uh, corporation, all the uh, different stakeholders uh, that were interested. Wanted to get that in before uh, they left the uh, chamber. Uh, only thing tonight is uh, the video from uh, Catherine. I'm still not allowed to pick the background music, but I'm going to do it before I leave. <laughs> so, Catherine. There's always something exciting to do in downtown Bloomington. Join us on April 13th from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. for an extraordinary experience, Global Slow Art Day. This worldwide phenomenon encourages participants to take a step back, slow down, and truly appreciate the beauty of art. No matter where you're from, art speaks a universal language, and you can wrap up the day of artistic exploration with a closing reception at the Hangar Art Company from 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. And looking ahead on April 20th from 9 a.m. to noon, it's the Indoor Farmer's Market at Grossinger Motors Arena, a one-stop shop for fresh produce, artisanal goods, and delectable treats, all under one roof. Whether you're a health-conscious foodie or just looking for a fun weekend activity, the Indoor Farmer's Market never disappoints points downtown Bloomington where every corner holds something for everyone again I uh, just want to say thank you uh, wanted to get that out before uh, everyone left uh, but truly a big uh, council meeting this evening so thank you very much to everyone thank you mayor okay and I would say the same thing here I think uh, this is a um, you know, it's just a, a wonderful uh, project, and it's something that makes me excited uh, to to see us um, moving in this kind of direction. You know, this is the the kind of stuff that I think is uh, aspirational and something that we can look forward to uh, for many years to come. It's going to uh, transform our downtown. I've I've been many places um, seeing. Uh, very nice uh, downtowns and feeling pretty jealous about it. So now uh, it, it is our turn. So uh, thanks again for everyone who has supported it, uh, not only through their work, but also, uh, you know, giving voice uh, to it uh, tonight. Really appreciate it. And the only, only other comment that I have is that I, the mayor still doesn't have his own music video like the city manager. So a little disappointed. Uh, we're going to move on to council members and see if anybody has uh, comments. Council member Bolin. Uh, yeah, I just for the community's sake, uh, on the consent agenda, about 90% of the items was water. So your water bill that's going up in May is going to be to support all these projects. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember Montney. I would just like to say I had the pleasure of uh, being at the um, <clears throat> the gathering for the local uh, hockey team um, with uh, many of the folks here um, on Saturday. And that was really something, having previously attended uh, the press conferences in the past, uh, this one clearly uh, felt very different and very substantial. And then I would also like to just call out again my, Mike Sewell, who has done a fantastic job uh, during the streetscape project of um, taking uh, on this work and leading this work. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the opportunity to collaborate with you through that. Thank you. Um. So can I have a motion to enter into executive session under section 2C1 of 5 ILCS uh, 120 personnel to discuss the appointment of an individual as successor to city manager Tim Gleason? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, motion by council member uh, Bolin, second by council member uh, Becker. Um, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilmember Kearns. Yes. Councilmember Bolin. Yes. Councilmember Montney. Yes. Councilmember Dannenberger. Yes. Councilmember Becker. Yes. Councilmember Hendricks. Yes. Councilmember Ward. Aye. Councilmember Crumpler. Yes. 
Okay, council is entering uh, executive session for session 2C1 of 5 ILCS 1 to 120 personnel to discuss the appointment of an individual as a uh, successor to city manager Tim Gleason. The room must be cleared uh, during executive session. Council will resume the open session meeting following executive session. However, no additional action will be taken except to adjourn regular session. Okay, take care.
<laughs> We're good. Okay, can I have a motion to return to open session and adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Okay, Councilman Becker, second by Councilmember uh, Ward. All those in favor, signify this, by saying aye. This one I do need aye. to. I need to roll call it. Really oh, quick. roll call. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I know. Yes, Councilmember Kearns. Yeah, yes, so ma'am. Complicated. Councilmember Bolin. Yes. Councilmember Montney. Yes. Councilmember Dannenberger. Yes. Councilmember Becker. Yes. Councilmember Hendricks. Yes. Councilmember Ward. Aye. Councilmember.